So um, with that, and with the quote from Audre Lord that I uh, gave earlier, I uh, kind of close out my presentation. Uh, like I said, this is probably the most that I ever talk in any kind of teaching scenario. And so I want to really open up to discussion, um, to thoughts, to questions, um, et cetera. Thank you so much for all of that. I really appreciate it so much. Um, at this point, if folks want to turn on their cameras and uh, take turns unmuting, um, Stephanie Sider says thank you in the chat. Um, you can ask questions in the chat. And I, I also feel like we're a small enough group that maybe we could handle just talking. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Um, do you want to unpin yourself? Alyssa says, you did an amazing job. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. I don't know how to unpin myself. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, maybe I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just put it on gallery view, so now I can see everybody. I don't know. I, I see everyone. I see you. Yeah. OK. OK, cool. I think we're good. Dirk says, yeah, it was an amazing presentation. Good job with all of this. Thank you for coming, Dirk. Yay. So I want to know, um, were people, um, was there new information for you? Did you learn anything kind of new about Black Lives Matter, about uh, intersectional feminism, about queer liberation? Um, or or was, I, was I preaching to the choir? Well, over the past year, I've been kind of learning this stuff through Sarah mostly because I was not informed until last year. So a lot, some of the stuff was um, re repeated, but some of the stuff I didn't read further into, and it was nice to hear further into some of these subject areas because you hear the terms, but sometimes you don't know what those terms mean. And this yeah. presentation really did help with that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, One of the things that I think really stuck out for me is still the level of oppression in a freedom movement, um, and particularly thinking about uh, transgender folks being left behind as we look for equality, as we look to, to celebrate love. There's still then those that are being excluded, which is uh, is heartening, which is, is heartbreaking. And you know, as I was thinking about how I wanted to make my comments, I'm like, I see that I see this on our campus. Like, we're okay with this group not okay with this group and, and and which is is just so complex you're like okay we're making progress but not nearly fast enough not nearly quick enough and we're still leaving folks behind yeah yeah i i see that on my campus um as well um coming from trans students kind of feeling like they're not properly represented um by by our queer center and the campus is kind of queer affirming politics. Thank you. Uh, Hazel says, I knew about Stonewall, but I did not know BLM was started by queer women. Yeah. Yeah, Same I think here. a lot of Same people here. don't know that. Amina says, you were great. Thank you, Sydney. It was nothing new for me, but that's okay. Smile face. I have to run to another meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming, you for Amina. Coming. It's always delightful. Yeah. yeah. Coming. Also, I want to let you know that your makeup in that picture, by the way, Amina, is amazing. Just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> your sartorial appreciation. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm seeing snaps and nods for some of the comments. Does anybody have any questions? Anything that made you wonder, open up your mind about something? Literally all the questions I would have had were literally answered by all the video stuff and conversations. So I'm all set with that, but thank you again so much. It takes a lot of courage to do a presentation like this as well. And with all the research that you've done, it was really amazing to have that presented. So thank you so much. Thank you. Where I would really like for this presentation to go is to actually focus more explicitly on femmes. So not just like queers 
and women, but also like legacies of femme resistance. That's a little bit further down in, in my research, um, but really thinking about black femme resistance um, and Black Lives Matter as, as uh, one of the places where that occurs. That was actually gonna be my question is where do you think femininity plays into this conversation or is that too big? I, it's not it's not at all too big. Um, it's just not something that I've completely parsed out. Um, I think that part of the resistance of femme is a resistance to heteronormativity and a, a kind of uh, intersectional resistance to systems of of oppression through different kinds of like, uh, bodily adornments and behaviors. Um, and I would really like to engage with more like Black power art that speaks from a femme perspective. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm interested in exploring. That's super exciting. And I mean, I almost yeah. super just made a presentation <laughs> about Janelle Monet. Like, <laughs> Let's just watch <laughs> Chanel Monet videos. <laughs> there is 2022. <laughs> Back again. <laughs> and let's just talk about Chanel Monet videos and the deployment of Black Fem for resistance. <laughs> that is a fun conversation. Do, does everybody know what heteronormativity means? Stephanie is thumbs upping. Kind of, I but I think a refresher would be good for me right now in my tired state. So I know, Sarah, you're the resource queen, so I'll let you explain it really <laughs> quick. Well, do folks know what normativity means? The sort of social pressures, probably the professors can actually do this better than I can, but social no, pressures to confirm to norms and heteronormativity speaks to you the social pressures and material consequences when you don't conform to norms around heterosexuality under the patriarchy and the gender binary and colonization. Okay. That makes How's sense. that? How's that? That's excellent. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Are folks thinking about how this applies to our campus, our campuses, multiple campuses? in our online lives. Yeah, I'd like to hear about that. Well, especially with Ferris being a very, very strictly, almost strictly, we have, we have a small LGBTQ plus community here, especially the active in the resource center, which is always nice to see. But there is a lot of people who are very hardcore traditionalists who don't even want to hear some of the stuff because it doesn't agree with their already preconceived bias of how life should be. Mm -hmm. So that like, this is definitely something big that that should be explained to people who even are not a part of the LGBTQ plus community to learn, learn to be accepting of a movement instead of just hearing what they hear on the news and go from there. Cause Black Lives Matter is not just one thing. There's a lot of things involving it, involving LGBTQ plus, involving anybody, any walks of life in the right. black communities. And it needs to be, more talked about and more openly discussed instead of hidden behind, you know, politics or whatever you like to whatever conversation topics they like to try to, you know, disguise it under. I have a couple of um, comments slash like thoughts. So I think the idea of black queer women being the like, you talk about feminine women, like I think that them being like the leaders of the BLM movement is really powerful because of the trope of like, uh, angry black woman is so you know thrown out there and like you know you have to be you masculine you know even right. you know. and so I think that's like really powerful that you know feminine black women are leading um, BLM. Another comment uh, about Ferris in particular um, someone who has been out to multiple areas besides just my own queer safe area um, it's kind of really scary here because we're actually one of the top most conservative schools in the nation uh, we are in the list of like the hundredth, you know, we're in like the hundredth percentile of the most conservative schools. So um, you go out, you see, you know, not, I don't want to stereotype, but you see a lot of like Trump flags and, you know, like anti-gay and anti-black, like, like memorabilia, not 
in a way that's learning him, but in a uh, you know, racial environment that you see when you go to people's houses. And it's really frustrating because you go into that space and you think the person's a good person, you go there and then you see you know, things on their walls that are derogatory. And it's super common and people don't think about it or you know, uh, they don't care. And it's sometimes you like you go in the space and it's like you feel very unsafe. Not on Ferris's campus, obviously. I've you know never felt that way here, but definitely in some of like the houses off campus and like the fraternities for sure. Um, and so it's like I don't know. I think that because like we have a whole thing on Martin Luther King. I go every, I've gone every third year. I've gone every year. Um, and the only people in the room are black people. Like there's no white people in those rooms that are watching and learning those things. Like black people already know their struggle. They don't need to hear it again and again and again. I feel that white people should be in those rooms and learning about those struggles because black people deserve happiness and deserve positive stories being told about them. They don't just need to hear the story of oppression over and over again. And, um, and I think that's something that's really struggling with Ferris particularly because the only people that already know it have already heard it and no one else will go and listen to it. That's my little comment. Yeah, wow. You really gave a mouthful um, in terms of like the importance of like Black joy and Black healing um, in terms of kind of the undoubtedly fear and frustration of like going to peers' houses or seeing in your local community things that are like antagonistic to your identity um or or to queer identities um and then also like how often the rhetoric around anti-blackness and anti-queerness um comes together right like how often that kind of rhetoric is is combined um and so you really like just brought up a mouthful uh to to think about and to navigate and one thing I noticed too, a lot of white people around the Ferris area, they don't want to hear more about it because they think they know about it from their very conservative high schools and they don't even get the full message. And it's like, do you, do you actually know what Martin Luther King fought for? Do you actually know about, you know, the problems that are currently, we're still dealing with? It's like they always talk about saying, you know, oh, you know, it all got fixed with civil rights. It didn't get fixed with civil rights. And that, that's what people are taught right now. And it's concerning because right. they, don't, they don't want to hear more about it. They're like, oh, you know, black people have the exact same rights as white people. That's not the case at all. And there needs to be more of a movement that I have to see for people who are definitely not, you know, part of the LGBT plus community because they need to hear it too. It needs to not just be the lovely, beautiful gays who are currently here with us, but like, you know, people who also live outside of the LGBTQ plus community needs to hear about this stuff and needs to understand and be open to stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and just a reminder, we don't know what everybody's identity is. That's also okay. Sorry. I, I am one a, of the gays, so that's I, also I, okay. I use a blanket <laughs> term gays because me, me and Sarah, that I usually use that term for me collectively. Um, but for other people, I understand oh, that as well. For myself collectively, I, I, say, I call myself the gays sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> professional homosexual says yes <laughs> yeah i mean what what we're seeing kind of across the board are legislative rights do not translate into rights in practice right and that was brought up kind of in the last video of where we go it's like yeah it's it's great and it's important that we have these like legislative um benefits but that doesn't put food on the table right that doesn't protect you from violence that doesn't save lives that kind of has the possibility the possibility of providing redress after the fact but it doesn't do anything for people in the now um and i think i think that's where a lot of activism is kind of focusing in on um like yes we want legislation but more importantly we want food we want housing we want health care we want education i do want to say this too legitimately once COVID's over we need to have people like you come on our campus and talk in person to a big group of people because you're amazing and you'd be really really like solid hitting and very explanatory to a bunch of people because i know like i know we have like the um the 
the it's the FSU seminar course. If we can make that a requirement, that would make a lot of things easier for explaining to other people about all this stuff. Because I learned a lot in the one year I've been here. That mainly, awesome. again, thanks to the lovely resource center we have here and the text and the um, different programs we have like this. And I'm really appreciative of people like you willing to do this for us again. I know I said it like two times now, but thank you. <laughs> That's so kind. Buy me lunch and we can figure something out. I do all sorts of things for food. <laughs> That's all college students right there. <laughs> and professors. Any other kind of thoughts or comments or follow up? I saw a lot of snaps. Alyssa, do you want to talk about what happened over the summer? You want to tell that story? I know you can because you just did it in a presentation. It's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> no, I can. I can. Um, I can. It's fine. Um, so, Sydney, right? That's okay to call you Sydney, not yes, Doctor? Please. Yes. Okay. Either way, you're still a doctor, and that's amazing. And I <laughs> so, um, uh, as um, Dirk and Hazel both mentioned, our area is very white. <laughs> just. I think it would be almost completely white if it weren't for the campus. Like, it's, you know, very rural, very small, um, with the exception to having the, the campus there. Um, but... Oh, no! <laughs> Frozen! <laughs> See you, Bubbery. I have to warn them when they come back. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, always happen, right? When you get to the crux of it, it's like... <laughs> yeah. Yep. Gotta love Ferris Wi-Fi. <laughs> maybe, maybe they will come back. It's okay. Um, yeah. Well, so... I can Alyssa... talk... Oh, amazing! <laughs> I'm gonna talk from Lindsay's phone. Because, yeah. Um, anyways, I don't know when I froze. Does anyone know where I was when I froze? Uh, you were just saying the area is very white except for the campus. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So um, I work at the McDonald's and I met a very good friend of mine um, and he was fresh out of high school and he identifies as gay and is also white, um, just to put some context in it. So he's from the rural area. Um, but he approached me and asked um, shortly after the George Floyd um, uh, incident, murder, whichever, um, you prefer. Uh, he approached me and asked me if we wanted to get a group of people together and um, kind of, you know, hold some kind of protest of our own. And initially it was uh, planned to be rather small as we didn't think that we would have much support. Um, and long story short, after creating um, a Facebook page and kind of telling everyone we knew, inviting people, having them invite people, it blew up. And um, it wasn't until, you know, we were really called out for being white people um, for organizing this that we kind of, that, well, especially I had to um, make him understand because I'm in social work. And so I, after like, it hit me in the face, like, duh, I shouldn't be doing this without the support of people of color. First of all, I should, I should be supporting them, not the other way around. And um, so it took a lot of convincing for him to understand why it was problematic for us to be organizing it, um, which in the grand scheme of things, we just, we really just didn't think it would blow up. We thought it would be a group of us holding some signs. No, no, it blew up. It was crazy, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. And it was taken on by a person of color. And that person was able to bring guest speakers um, from other colleges, um, other departments, uh, head of public safety at the time, and things of that nature. But it was definitely a really crazy experience to um, kind of have something like that happen on our campus. Um, and Sarah likes me to tell the story. And I'm not sure why, but <laughs> I don't really know where to go with this because I was put on the spot. Uh, so, That's yeah. <laughs> I, I like it when you tell the story, both because it illustrates something rad about like our our white queer community and also like about that white learning and like supporting black power and black community building that is also happening on campus even while we're dealing with a conservative environment 
and a lot of overt anti-blackness and anti-queerness. Um, so thank you for sharing that story. And like, I, I feel like it's always helpful, at least for for people like me, for white queer people to hear like, what's the thought process? Where do we fit into the work of trying to make a world that's livable where black, queer and trans people can have joy and rest and, and power and leadership? Um, what's what's the thing to do to support that and yeah so I I love I love that story I love I love like that you tried and also that you changed what you were doing honestly like <laughs> and I love 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 what Byron Brooks did to take it over and turn it into a really amazing multimodal multi multi-site um, expression of the campus community caring caring about black lives um, at Paris and everywhere so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was definitely yeah. a long story short, so I'm sorry about all of this spewing. <laughs> like, I went to that, thing, I think I went to that, and it was like a mini pro, like a protest thing. We walked, it was near flight, right? That's the one you're talking yep. about. Yep. I remember going to that because I, I wasn't expecting that many people to get involved, especially in this community. So, it was huge. Because I, I was expecting, because I was originally going to go to the one, I think it was in the Rite Aid parking lot, I think you said to do something something on those lines um and i was going to join it because I, I wasn't expecting much of people to be on campus at that time so being able to march with people and be able to have that experience to be able to be in support of people who are able to take over leadership was really nice to see especially again in big rapids where it's only republicans and people who definitely are not lgbtq um, spreading some hate around the, the community that I've seen before that happened, but it was really nice. So th thank you very much for helping ignite the fire and helping find the right people to help lead that. And it's clearly like whatever people's political affiliations are, it's clearly not just, right? There are pockets of conversation happening and like this is another pocket of conversation happening. Um, so I am excited to sort of hold space for more of these conversations and also recognize places where folks have been doing this. Um, so like this is a plug for going to everything that the Office of Multicultural Student Services plans ever. <laughs> all, ever all of us, let's let's go. <laughs> um, and also to recognize some really powerful organizing also coming from uh, some of the Black Greek organizations, uh, both men's and women's. So that's also happening on campus. But like Dirk, you're right white folks are mostly not paying attention to that um which is a shame because it's, it's powerful and super rad okay i can stop talking <laughs> does anybody else have thoughts questions <laughs> i know i've already talked um but that something i can jump off of so my town is a very um multicultural town uh we have a very diverse group of people i'm from battle creek um, most people up here don't know anything about Battle Creek, but uh, we had a protest slash, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, parade uh, when the when not all that went down at the same time, and it stopped at in front of our town, took a bunch of taxes and like updated our police like building and everything, and it like stopped in front of that. And it actually ended like really bad. Like the police all came out and like were screaming and like there were times and like it was all over the news. Um, it wasn't as bad as like people were saying it was on Facebook, but like people made it be this like thing that happened. But it was kind of crazy because um, I know a bunch of stuff like went down in Kalamazoo as well. And I have friends that live there. And then in like Grand Rapids, I have friends that live there too. And so like at that time, so. If you don't know this about me, my boyfriend is mixed, and his family is, you know, mixed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really scary for them because uh, that point in time, you know, we have a pretty corrupt uh, police department in my town. And um, dealing with that as someone who, I'm, you know, I'm white, I don't have to experience that uh, fear. And so having to, like, learn from their eyes, like, what, how normal that is and how, like, that fear is, like, truly for them was really... Uh, it was really sad and scary for me um, because to me, that was like never something I had to think about. And so for them to be like, yeah, like just trying to like protest your rights can be a really terrifying concept. Yeah. Thank you, Hazel. Yeah, we're, we're looking at maybe some more 
protests and maybe some more violence in our communities. It's been happening. So. Thankfully, like, we didn't have, like, anybody really get hurt, but there was, like, a lot of threatening stuff that went down in my town um, because, you know, that's sometimes that's what happens. But I just, I feel for everybody that, you know, that stuff happened to because it's, like, my boyfriend's family is from Wisconsin, and, like, that doesn't sound like a scary place, but um, his cousin, his uncle got shot um, in like a crossfire in a like gun shootout thing. And so it's like, I don't know, I'm rambling, but it's just like Black Lives Matter is really important and police brutality and like it happens and it's not funny and it's really sad and scary. And it's like, I don't know, really sad more than anything, I think. Because I feel like as a white person, I don't have to fear about being shot and killed. And, but I have a significant other who I have to worry about, you know, and I know that that's like selfish, but it's like, I should care for more than just that reason, but I don't know. You have more of a personal connection. Oh. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people get into activism through a personal connection. Um, Sometimes that's kind of the foray into having to kind of think about issues larger than the individual. So I don't think that that's necessarily selfish. I actually think that's quite a common path, you know? Agree, super, super common path and important to talk about. And, yeah. and thank you again for, for sharing your experience. Um, it's getting to be close to that time. Does anybody have any last words? Fran says, I need to go. Thanks, everyone. It was a great presentation and discussion. I'm looking forward to my muffin. I know. What is this <laughs> muffin talk? <laughs> Tell us what the muffin is. We need to know before you leave. <laughs> Uh, so I've been looking, so I'm so sorry. I, I yes. know I'm hopping in and out, so, you know, I'm at home in my kitchen. Uh, I love pumpkin, anything. And so we're making pumpkin muffins with like a cream cheese filling. I don't know. Uh, I, so, I need a recipe. <laughs> because it's on, Yeah, let me see if I can. Speaking of fucking paranormative trends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, King Arthur uh, baking. It was pretty straightforward. So, yeah. I, okay. I, don't mind me. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, what's, what's fall without some pumpkin muffins, apparently? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm white. Have, anything I, pumpkin is my, like, yeah. style, so. It's, if I have to yeah. live through COVID, I'm not going down skinny. Like, that's my <laughs> like, they, they They won't be able to take me with just one person. <laughs> yes, that power. That power. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, in that case, let me just say thank you again, Dr. Lewis. Thank you again, all of you, for coming and for sharing and thinking and asking questions and being brilliant. And I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks for being here. Thanks so um, much.